Oh, so, if we're asked to add these rational expressions and the denominators are not the same, what we're going to do is we're going to set up one big fraction where we take our denominators, we multiply those together, and since ultimately we're going to form a rational expression here as our answer, I'm going to leave these denominators factored. Because if I want to simplify that rational expression down further, I need it in a factored form. So I multiply the denominators together, then I start doing this little cross product trick. I take this first diagonal here, I'm taking 5 times that quantity of x minus 7, and that's important to remember it is a quantity, you'll have to distribute through. And then we are adding on, for this second diagonal, 1 times that x plus 3. We're really writing that 1 is optional, because that 1 distributes through and we just end up with x plus 3. If you go ahead and set this up further where we're distributing things out in the numerator, distribute the 5 through, you've got 5x minus 35. Uh, distributing the 1, like I said, that's just going to leave us with the x plus 3. Denominator stays in a factored form, just in case later on stuff cancels out. If you combine your like terms, now let's see, we've got 5x plus x, so 6x. We've got negative 35 plus 3, so that's negative 32 over our factored form down here. The only thing left to do at this point really would be consider factoring the numerator. The numerator is factorable. You know, you could take a, a 2 out. But the thing about factoring is Really, you only continue with the problem and factor stuff out if you know things are going to cancel. So if I take a 2 out here, that leaves me with 3x minus 16. That actually didn't do me much good. So you could argue that, yeah, this answer we just came up with here at the end, that's good. But ideally, at this step, you'd be all right as well. <laughs> Moving on to a similar type problem. Um, adding and subtracting here, only this time we've got three fractions to consider. Using our little trick like we did on the first one, um, you could do that, at least with maybe these first two fractions putting those together or these last two fractions putting those together. But here it, it'd probably be easier just to try to figure out what the least common denominator is going to be. I mean, you can see all the pieces that make up the factors in the denominator anyway. And if you consider those pieces and what's in common, you'll see there's an x that's in common all the way through. If you take the highest power of x, which obviously is x squared, it would make sense that each of our denominators, if this is going to be common, should have an x squared in it. Since I've already got the x squared here and here, maybe I multiply an x on over here to create that x squared. And as the rules go with fractions, whatever I multiply to the denominator, I also multiply to the numerator. At the same time, considering all these factors that make up my denominators, I've got some y's that are present. Highest power of y that is present um, in the first and the last fraction is just a power of 1. So it makes sense to have a y to a power of 1 here on this middle one. I multiply y to the bottom, multiply y to the top as well. What I should be able to do is now create one big fraction over here where my least common denominator is going to be x squared y. If I take my numerators here and set up those terms in the numerator in my resulting fraction here, I'm going to have 7x. It would be minus the 8y and then plus 9, at which point everything is put together as one fraction. Uh, you could consider trying to factor it further to cancel things out, but that's not possible, so that's as good as we can do. Okay. Now I want to go through this one um, just as an example where we can bring together 
to the ideas we've talked about so far. Um, you know, the first problem we did where we had just the two fractions, we found a little uh, cross multiplication trick worked out pretty nice since the denominators were not the same. Sure, we could do that here. However, if you look at this more in the factored sense, like you notice this is a difference of two squares right here, you could break this up to x minus 5, x plus 5. By recognizing that, now seeing all of my factors out in the open in the denominator, you'll notice how the x plus 5 and x plus 5 are in common between the two. Meaning if I want a least common denominator, I could make a, a subtle little adjustment over here and multiply on an x minus 5, right, since that's a, a shared factor over here. Just like we did on the previous problem, whenever you do the bottom, you also do the top. And now we know our least common denominator will be that x minus 5 times x plus 5. I could set up one big fraction. Got my least common denominator. If I look at the adjustments that need to be made in the numerator, first numerator here you've got 1, which I would distribute to that x minus 5. Obviously I'd have x minus 5. And then I'm subtracting this 2. No adjustments were necessary to that numerator since we had our least common denominator already down here. If you combine your like terms, in the numerator you've got x minus 7 over the factored form of x minus 5, x plus 5. Keeping everything in the factored form, you look to see if you can cancel anything out so you can reduce it down further. Obviously that's not going to happen here, so you got your answer. All right, moving on to multiplication, the difference between multiplication and division versus the addition subtraction idea is when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions or fractions, you have to have a common denominator. When you're multiplying or dividing, it doesn't matter. If you're multiplying, you can literally go straight through the top and straight through the bottom, multiplying everything out. So if I go straight through the top here, well, really there's nothing alike that I can join together, so I just kind of smush it all together. I've got negative 3a, b to the second, c to the fourth when I multiply through the numerator. And in the denominator, if I keep my numerical value first, I've got 12. If I go in alphabetical order, it would be a, c. Or now you've smushed it all together. If you look at what results, taking it piece by piece here, the negative 3 over 12 you could reduce that like a fraction. Negative 3 twelfths would reduce to negative 1 fourth, right? As far as the a's are concerned, you got an a to the first and a to the first. Since these are all multiplied parts, you can cancel those out. You've got a b to the second. So I'm just going to make that b to the second like that. And then we've got a c to the fourth over c to the first. If we divide that out, what's the rule with those exponents? Okay, subtract the exponents, so you're going to have c to a power of 3. Is it going to come home and be like, some weirdo meowing on this video. That was me. All right, along a, a similar line here, now we're doing some division. Uh, if we do division, really there's a couple ways to do this. As a side note, you know, if I have say a over b times c over d. Like we just talked about on number four, multiply your numerators, multiply your denominator, cancel from there, right? Whenever you're dividing, so I've got a over b divided by c over d, we understand that division is just multiplication disguise. Right? We take the a over b as our first fraction. We multiply the reciprocal of the second. So that's a strategy we could use here on number five. Um, but another thing we could do with number five is thinking back to how we dealt with those uh, trig problems that we did. If you've got a fraction within a fraction and you want to clear those little fractions out, just take what the denominator is on those little fractions, multiply the top and the bottom, by that denominator, 
in doing that, well, let's see, up here the B's would cancel out. That's kind of the point. And you'd be left with just A. And in the denominator, you'd have B times C. That's it. So on this final one, we're bringing it all together. But like the, uh, the previous problem, if you've got a fraction within a fraction, in this case we've got a couple, and you notice the denominators are the same. Uh-oh, here we go again. There we go. Since the uh, denominators are the same, we can multiply the top and the bottom by that denominator. If we multiply to both the numerator and denominator by that x plus 3, we're distributing it through to both terms. And we're starting to have a glitch, aren't we? Oh well. If you multiply the x plus 3 through, you've got 4 times the quantity of x plus 3. Make sure we understand we got to distribute that 4 through. The x plus 3 multiplied to the 1 over x plus 3. The x plus 3s cancel, leaving you with just that numerator of 1. In the denominator, same kind of thing unfolds. You have 4 times that x plus 3. <laughs> and then, for this one, we're subtracting the 1 over x plus 3. So the x plus 3s again cancel, leaving you with minus 1. You distribute this out, you've got 4x plus 12 plus 1 over 4x plus 12 minus 1. Collect your like terms, 4x plus 13 over 4x plus 11. That's as far as we can go.